So, two knight versus pawn is the most complex ending that can be argued, I guess, but it's at least one of the top three. I think it's the most complicated. Um, so, we are going to look today at cases where the king is already trapped in the corner. So, so let's say this is an overview over the whole endgame, A, B, C, D. And we are going to do the A part where the king is already trapped in the corner. So if the king is not trapped in the corner yet, we have to make very complicated movements with king and knight to chase the king around the board. So one of the knight has to stay in front of the pawn to keep it from going down the board. So that's the reserve knight. So but moving or chasing the king around with king and knight, that's not easy. So that's another step in that end game. And then there are even more complicated king knight versus king movements. And then there are some special cases. And Trotsky has written about this end game in detail in one of his books. So the A part, the first part. So here's a little more specifics on that part. That's one to seven. So the king is already trapped in the corner or near the corner. So, um, so we'll look at both cases. Um, so the first thing we have to learn is to change front and you will see what that means. Then at the right moment, we release the reserve knight to mate. So it's a combination of changing front and getting the black king where we want it. And then at the right moment, we release the reserve knight. And then there are two basic cases. The black king can be in the upper half of the board or the lower half of the board. And that makes some difference because when the pawn moves down the board, it can, it can protect certain squares. So the knight cannot go there. In case of the king being in the upper half of the board, it's usually just a race of mating before the pawn promotes. Then we're going to look at ways to lose a tempo with a knight. Now it's even two knights uh, and a king. So, so we already talked a little bit about this in a previous class. So now we're going to add a few more details to this. It's always interesting when you have pieces like king and knight who cannot really in themselves lose a piece. The king can make a triangulation, but there are more options when we are king and two knights. And then understanding the Trotsky line is important. So we're going to do that as well. And that should cover that first part. So let's get to it. I will stop sharing. And then share again. So change front. So I have left the pawn and the reserve knight out of the picture. So this is how we do it. So first thing we notice is that this position, it doesn't matter if white or black is to move because white moves first can lose the tempo. So if we are white and want to change front, that means we take the king and knight and instead move them here and here where the black king moves to h7. So we, we mirror the, um, or we change the board like 90 degrees. So it goes like this, king f6. And the whole reason why we can lose a tempo here is that the knight controls the g7 square. So we can we work around that. So, so let's say, let's see, after king f6, let's say king goes to h7, trying to run up the board here. We want to keep it in the corner. So we play king g5. And here, because the knight is controlling that square, there is uh, black can play something like this. Then we get down here. Then we get to the starting position with black to move. And if black plays king h8, we could get to the starting position like this, black to move. But we also have other options depending. Maybe sometimes we want to go here. So um, now we have the starting position with black to move. Black has to go to the corner. And this is when we change 
front. Black has to go to h7. And now we go knight to g7, just to take away this square. King h6, king f6, king goes back. We go knight to f5, taking a6 square. King g8, king e7, and again, the knight controls this square. So now we force the king back to the h file. So let's say king g8, and then king f7. And then we have changed the front. So if you remember at the beginning, the pieces were like this, and now they are like this. So there's one final point here. At the final moment when we exchange front, black, we, there's, there's no way we can win a tempo because black can go to g8, and then in order to cover this square, we have to go to f7. So in the second part of changing front, it's actually, we, we cannot win any tempo. And that is an important detail, as we will see when we look at the Trotsky line. Okay, so um, this procedure of changing front is, um, is important. So, so well, we get a chance to practice that later when we have some, uh, some mating puzzles. Okay. So let's try to move on. Let's see how it works in action. So here we have a position where the king is trapped in the corner. And this setup is great because we only give the black king two squares. So now it's just a question of how to release the reserve knight and checkmate. So unfortunately, if we, if we release it now, it's it's too slow to uh, to get to c6 so we have to prepare it a little bit so the idea is let's say that the knight landed on c6 the king had to move in the corner then the king is basically stalemate and then we can move the other knight to b5 and mate on c7 but this only works if black has a pawn otherwise well, we have to stalemate the king before we can mate it. That's why black needs a pawn. But it's too slow. So we need three moves to get to c6, and then we need another two moves to, to checkmate the king. And this black pawn is only two moves away from promotion. So we need to be clever about how we do this. So we need when we release this knight, we need to get to b6 with a check. So the king needs to be on h8. So we need to change front. And we can, in the beginning, we can always play this move, so it doesn't matter who moves first. Let's say king moves here. By the way, I should say, because the knight controls this square, um, if white tries to be clever, something like that, the white can always work around um, if white wants to, uh, to lose that tempo. Let's say king a7, king a5, exactly because the knight controls that square. So if we really wanted the starting position with black to move, we can always get it. So king c6. Okay, starting position, black to move, king a8, king goes to c7. Now we change front, knight goes to c5. And here's black's problem. So we are going to have position with kings here and here. It's black to move, and then he has to play king a8. So let's say, then we go here because we want it to be black's move in this position. And so how do we um, release the reserve knight now and mate? So let's just do this in the chat. I just want to make sure you, you get this part. The puzzles, the eight puzzles, we'll do a lot of checkmating of, of the black king 
um, when it's already trapped in the corner. So made in how many moves? Or you can also put in the moves if you want. Okay, so let's see it. Knight goes to c4, pawn tries to promote, knight b6 check. And this is the moment where we give a check and now the king is stalemate. So now we just need to get the knight to b6 like this. And it's a checkmate. So, uh, so that took a little bit of changing front before we could checkmate. Okay, so let's take the next example. I have chosen a few examples that are a little bit more complicated because, uh, because of the pawn. Let's say now that it's a C pawn, so black can promote with check, so we have to be careful. So in general, when we are trying to checkmate the black king in the corner, we always need these two squares. Let's say in all corners, we need these squares. So, so a, C, a, a bishop's pawn, a C pawn, or an F pawn will always control this square, let's say. So that, that's always a challenge. So the same goes for it's, if it's a B pawn or G pawn, a knight pawn. So that's even worse because uh, there would, there was, that would control these two important squares. So, so that's why in a Trotsky line, the G pawn and B pawn are so far back. We'll get to that. So, but the C pawn here, promotion with check is a challenge. So we need to get around that. And the way we get around it is this knight will eventually land on C6 to shield the check. So let's see how we do this. So we cannot release it right away. So we have to do some preparation. So we change front first. Okay. And this was our starting position actually, but now it's black to move. And now with the king on a7, we have a check on c6. Um, so we release the knight. Actually, we're not going to give the check on c6 because we need to um, make sure the king is stays in the corner. So knight, see we could also play knight b5 check but then we have a problem. The, our problem is that, um, let's say, if we play knight b5, so we could try to mate on b6, but then there's the promotion with check. So that's our challenge here. So there's only one way to do it, is to check on c8, and then block with this knight on c6, and then knight b6 checkmate. So uh, a different challenge, so there's for every pawn uh, on the board and the king in the other part of the board or the lower part of the board. So there are all kinds of different challenges. So, um, and on my blog, I've actually put up uh, 50 exercises with uh, two knight versus pawn, uh, simply taking all the options. Um, so if you like to do these kinds of puzzles, you can go to my blog. Um, I'll probably just uh, put put all of them in in the database for you because you can download them from the blog. So so maybe I'll just put it in the database. So let's see um, let's see the next example. So now we have the black king in the lower part of the board, and this presents a challenge because when this black pawn moves forward it will control the C2 square. 
let's see why this is a problem. Let's say if we go ahead and, and want to check maybe the black king, we go knight a3 check. And now the black king is stalemated. We just need to checkmate it. And then we go knight b4 with this idea of knight c2. Then black can play d3. So we would like this position with black to move. In that case, black would have to go c2. And then we can checkmate on uh, d2. And then we can checkmate on c2. So we need to lose a tempo. And here's a great idea. If we get this knight to this square, then these two knights would create a wall around the black king. And the black king would only be able to go back and forth. And while the black king does that, we can triangulate like this, get back to the starting position, move the knight back, and we have the starting position with black to move suddenly. So let's see how that goes. First, the two knights imprisons the black king. Then the white king makes triangulation. And then we get back to the starting position. OK. So three moves to get to b4. Let's see. OK. The black king is trapped. So we make our triangulation. Okay, then we go back with a knight to c4, and voila, it is black to move. And king a1, and now we cannot play knight a3 because it's, it's stalemate. But instead we can go king to c2, check, and now we have our stalemate, and we go knight a3, black has to check. King b3. And we have our position with black to move. Black has to go d2. And we have knight c2 made. So, so remember this setup with um, actually this setup with the two knights. The two knights defending each other would always create a wall like this of three pawns. And when they are like this compared to the corner, we actually imprison the black king. So this is worth remembering. So it's a very nice idea. Uh, and actually the only way to solve this with a d4 pawn going down the board. Okay, so let's take the next example. So here's another example of how we can lose a tempo in a position like this. Because the knights are doing a great job. Hmm. The knights are, are doing a great job, let's say, building this wall, right? So the black king can't really uh, get to the reserve knight. So what the black king is always trying to do is always trying to get to the reserve knight because that will tie up white. So, so white should generally avoid that. So the knights are doing a great job. The problem is we, we need to get the king off the back rank. So right now black just follows. So we cannot get the king out. So what we do is we go all the way over here. And then when the king is far away, we go knight e4. And we've already talked a little bit about this in a previous class, that if you're stubbing a passed pawn, you have these waiting moves in front of the pawn. Um, so king goes back. This is our opening. We can go out with the king. And then the knight can just go back to f2. And now black is in Tukchang, and the white king will get off the back rank. Let's say something like this. And we'll get closer to the center. And then the king and knight, this knight, will start to chase the black king around um, in king and knight movements. And this is the part we're not going to talk about today because it's very complicated. Um, but one point is that when you chase the black king around with king and knight, there is, um, there's a forcing element to it because uh, 
the king cannot get stuck in the corner if the reserve knight is too close because then suddenly white can shift to a kingside attack. Because of that option, then the black king has to run. And so the king and knight can actually force the black king around the board. Um, but that's, again, that's very complicated. That's really the next step in this end game. Um, but it's fascinating. So let, let's try our next position. So this is called Bolton's position. And we, we are going to use the, uh, the information here later. So what we notice is the pawn has gone as far as h3. This is our promotion square for black. And with a pawn on h3, we know that in cir some, some circumstances, we can sacrifice the knight on h2 and made in this corner because the pawn is on h3. That would not be possible with the pawn on h4, but once on h3, we have this extra option. So uh, if we can chase the black king down in this corner, then um, we have checkmate options. So Bolton's position goes like this, knight f2. And if king g3, then knight to g4. And here we have the two knights protecting each other and creating this wall here. So, so now we are actually keeping the, the black king in the corner. Let's see. The king tries to escape. We just keep it out and push it down like this. Um, then black can try to be clever. Then we sidestep because we want in this position. And here white has, how can white mate the black king here? Let's get some practice with this two knight mate. If you see it, you can put it in the chat. So we have a mate in two moves. We can go knight f3, forcing the pawn forward. And then we have knight f2 checkmate. So um, let's go back. So let's say Let's say black king is running up the board, then we can keep it down like this. It's not running up to the h8 corner. So this is both his position. It's very useful. So I should also say that this pawn has gone as far as, as h3. So it has crossed the Trotsky line. And we're going to look at the Trotsky line just in a minute, but the Trotsky line says that um, if the pawn has not crossed a certain line, you are able to mate in all four corners. The problem is when the pawn has gone as far as h3, you are not able to mate in this corner. You, know, you can mate in all the other corners, that's fine, but not in a8. But uh, in this case, black is not able to get to the a8 corner. So, uh, Okay, the Trotsky line. So, and, and my goal today is just, let's try to understand it. And there's um, three big points I want to make. So black is going down the board, uh, as in, in all positions we're looking at. And we see that, um, we had this case of the pawn on h4, and there's a huge difference between h3 and h4. We'll get into that later with a brilliant study. Then we also have um, the central pawns. And we, we saw a situation where the pawn was on d3. That was our 
first example where white was actually able to mate. But there is one exception, and this is the reason why the pawns are back here and not on the third rank, because there is this one exception. So the Trotsky line is to, to, um, to have all the cases. So to be on the line or beyond the line, you have to be able to mate in all four corners. If there is a slight exception, then that means that we go back to the fourth rank instead of the third rank. I will show you that exceptions. That's one of the three cases. Um, then we have the F pawn uh, running down and the C pawn, the bishop's pawn. And the only reason why it's on, let's say, F5 and not F4, it's simply the fact that um, this is more for optical reasons. It's simply the fact that, let's say that the black king is in this corner. So we always talked about uh, we need these two squares, either for a king and knight. And if the pawn is on f4, then the, the pawn is going to disturb us right from the beginning. So that's why uh, the pawn on f4 is put back on f5 in the Trotsky line, just to have all cases covered. So that was the central pawns and the bishop's pawn. Um, B and G pawns. We, we will see a lot of cases of this, but it is basically to the fact that when, when black promotes on G1, it's always disturbing on us on in, in both corners on these two important squares. So the G pawn is annoying. That's why we needed to put it all the way back. However, There is, actually, if you put the pawn on g5, b5 in the Trotsky line, and there was a reserve knight on g4, it's actually possible to mate in all four corners. So the pawn could have been on g5 instead of g6. The reason why it's not is there is one little exception. This is one of the cases we will look at too. So there's one little exception, and then Trotsky, he put it back on G6 to cover all cases. And then the last of the three cases is with this H4 pawn, which is very complicated. And there's this uh, very fascinating study I will show at the end. So, so let's get into it, instead of just talking about the Trotsky line. Um, so let's move on. Okay, so here we have the case of, if you remember the Trotsky line, it was like this. Okay, so here we have a case of the pawn has crossed the Trotsky line, but it's actually still possible to mate in all corners. So if white is to move, so this is a case in point, if white is to move, knight e4, and then knight g3. So white was in time, to keep the black king trapped in this corner. And now white wins because black was not able to attack the reserve knight. Okay, so we can quickly see how it goes. Um, then king e8, because the knights are taking away all these squares. So um, if the king goes to g6, we can go to f8, and then we are about to trap the king in the corner. So here, let's say king g6. And now we just need a knight. Actually, the king is already trapped in the corner by the reserve knight and the king. So now we are ready to release the reserve knight and we have a lot of moves to spare here. So, so that wasn't too hard. The hardest part was to... Um, Let's say after knight g3, it will simply win this because the king is trapped. If black moves first, then king h, king g6. And you see, after king g6, we were not able to get our knight to g3. So white, black will now get the king to h4. And there is no win in this position. Believe it or not. 
So for this reason, Trotsky, he, to cover all cases, he thought G5 doesn't work, even though you are able to mate in all corners. So I will put it back on G6. This one exception makes the whole difference. Okay. So the next case is this. And, and uh, Trotsky, it's very typical of Trotsky. He made a study about this. So he, he actually created quite a lot of studies like this, where it ends up in two knights versus pawn, where it's a theoretical win. And then he just stops the, the, the end game studies, like now white is winning. Um, so he had all the theory of two knight versus pawn, and then he created all these studies with all these small points that you, you don't understand if you haven't, if you don't understand the end game. So, but that's typical Trotsky. Um, so if you remember that Trotsky line, the pawns were on, the central pawn were on the fourth rank. So here's a case where the pawn is on the third rank. And with the pawn on d3, we can definitely mate in this corner and this corner and this corner. And this corner depends on who's to move, let's say the opposite to d3. So we have the situation of d3 versus king in that corner, or let's say e3 versus king in that corner. It depends on who's to move. So that's why it's an exception. And in the end, uh, Trotsky ended putting the line back to the fourth rank because of this exception. So let's see why. It has something to do with, because the pawn is only two squares away from promotion, we need to get to that f6 square with a check. It's very important. So, so this is how it goes, the study. You start with knight e7 check. And then check, we are going to win the queen for our rook. If king f8, we have knight g6. So king here, then rook check. And here we have a very important moment. And this study shows the slight difference, this exception very well. That's why I picked it. So let's say, um, let's say white just goes ahead and takes the queen and then traps the king in the corner. Now we have to control h6. Now we have the position we want, but uh, unfortunately it's black to move. So black can slip down in the corner. And now um, we cannot release the knight with a check on f6, so this is a draw. So if you remember, if we change front, we can, at the beginning, we can lose the tempo, that's not a problem. But in the second half of changing front, uh, it is black to the side. So we are not able to get back to this position uh, with a tempo less or something. So this is a draw because white is to move in this position. So let's try to go back. So white has to be clever and get the right position. So instead, he plays knight f5 check first. And then takes the queen and then king f7. Because now it is, yeah, you're right, knight f5. So now it is black to move, unfortunately. And black has to go king h7. And here we go. And a knight to g6 and mate. But the big point is this position is a position of mutual zugzwang. So because of this, both pawns are on the fourth rank. Okay. And for the last exception, um, we have this study. And this is going to take a while. I think it's made in 54 moves. So uh, this is probably the most fascinating in-game study I've ever come across. 
Um, so let's look at it in detail. So let's see, it starts out with black to move and black plays king a1. Let's start by doing this. I will give white the move instead. And then let's try to find the mate here if white moves first. So how can white mate the black king? So white releases the reserve knight and mates the black king. How does this work? Yeah, so I understand what you're saying. I believe, Bora, then the, the knight b3 checkmate at the end is the other knight that moves twice uh, after you stalemated the king in the corner. So let's go with that. So the knight goes to c1. That's a check. Then king has to go to the corner, and then we can use the other knight to get to b3. So knight f2. Check. And stalemate in, in the corner. And we can checkmate. Okay, so black moves first. And as you remember, um, this pawn is on the Trotsky line, which means that we can mate in all four corners. But there is a problem. And the problem is that if the black king approaches the reserve knight, um, white cannot allow that because we are not able to sacrifice the knight on h3. If we want to be able to sacrifice the knight, then the knight has to be on h2 instead of h3. So, so either white does not allow the black king to attack this knight on h3. So if the king gets to g3, here's a draw. So, so white has to be very careful. So the method to do this is to force black to play the move h3 and then get a knight to h2 and then suddenly the black king is allowed to approach the reserve knight because we can sacrifice it on h2. So how do we get the knight from h3 to, to h2? That's a weird question but we are going to let's say uh, let's call it change horses in the middle of the stream. So, so we're going to place the horses, the, the knights here, and then we can, we can change them. Um, so that is the first part of the study, and it's the only way to do it, because we, as I said, the king cannot be allowed to attack the reserve knight as it is. So let's see how that goes. Black had the first move, king a1, so now there is no releasing the reserve knight and mating in the corner. So now white needs to change front, Okay, that's what we do. Okay. And then we got back to changing front. Actually, uh, black can force white to go king d3 here, but white wants this position with black to move. So. Had black gone king a1, white would have gone king a3, and then like this. So, so we have this position. And with the king in the corner, we are now going to transfer the knights to f3, f4. So here, knight f3. 
So let's see, if the king tries to run out, we are going to play knight f4. And let's say black is not going to move this pawn voluntarily. He, he's just waiting. So let's see, something like, let's see, king d1, king c1, king c3, and then king goes back to c1. Then we can check on e2. And if king b1 is going to be made in the, in the corner here. Okay. So when that check happens, the king has to go to d1. And now the king has no moves. So now black is forced to move the pawn. And then we change horses here. And knight goes to h2. And now the king, now that the pawn has crossed the Trotsky line and gone to h3, if you remember, we are no longer able to mate in that corner of the board. But luckily for us, um, black doesn't have access to that corner in any way. So it has to go this way. And already now we are forcing the king um, the right way. And just to a little reminder, let's say if king takes the knight, then we are going to checkmate him in the corner. And the clue was here to, to always keep an eye on this square, so black cannot stalemate himself. So knight e4, king has to go back. And do you remember the the, the mate here, there's a mate in three moves. Let's just repeat that for a moment. We had these two ideas of mating, king and knight. It's not knight g5. Yeah, Kim, can you follow up? You're on the right path. With the knight. So we had to control that h2 square, so we force the pawn forward. And then at the same time, we want to be able to checkmate on g3. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, um, there was this other idea, there was two mating ideas, but in this position, the other one going to g4 doesn't work because you are not in time to do this checkmate. That's what, that was the, one of the methods. But in this position, black is about to stalemate himself because you were not able to checkmate on g3. So this is one move too slow. So the, the knight to g4 idea doesn't work here. It has to be the knight to f1. Yeah. So this was the other idea. And then keeping an eye on g3 and forcing h2. So checkmate. So the changing of knights there on f3, f4 is the key. So, um, so let's go back. So instead of trying to approach the knights with king c1, let's say black just stays in that corner, king a1. Now knight f4. And remember, if h3, then white should be ready to play knight h2. And then we just have to prevent the king from going to a8. Otherwise, we can checkmate it. So let's see. h3. So why does black play h3 now? So let's see. Let's say he plays king b1 instead and refuses to, to move that pawn. So how do we checkmate the black king now in the a1 corner? So this is, this is good practice before the puzzles. And again, I'm just, I'm just explaining everything about the end game. The actual puzzles you, you are asked to do, they are not so complicated as some of the examples I, I put up here. So, uh, but this is all to, to, to understand the end game. 
So this is a typical position where we're releasing the reserve knight, and now we need to checkmate before black promotes to a queen. Yeah. There's a couple of ways, and uh, your way borrower works. That's great. Knight e2, knight d3. I would in I would automatically play the knight to d3 because this is just trapping the king in the corner. But knight e2 is another way, so for sure. Yeah, you would have to, to control c1 before you, you start moving that knight again. So this also works, but then you have to go knight d2 check now. Next. And then this knight has to check made on c2. So, uh, so let's just have a look. So 92, h3, then check. The king is stalemated and we just need to get to c2. Checkmate. Um, another way. So Ken, did you mean to write knight c3 or knight d3? Because the knight cannot jump to c3 in one move. Ah, uh, okay. But then once we do this, yeah, we have to make sure that the king is not running out. So, so the method is first we trap the king in the corner, and then we use the other knight to chase it all the way in the corner, and then we move around. So it's more complicated if we suddenly allow the king to, to, to run to c1, for sure. I like knight d3, but it's all um, variations over the same. Now the king is stalemated, so we can move this knight around and checkmate. So, yeah, that's why black has to play h3 here. And now, of course, we play knight h2. And now we still have some work to do, because after knight d3, trapping the black king in the corner, um, we need to change front a couple of times in order to be ready, so let's see. First we change front. So now we have it. So again, if black tried to be clever with this, we would go here. So we actually want this position because we are going, we are going back to, uh, to the original front, or at least halfway back. So let's see. So, this was changing front because if you remember the king and knight was here before. So now we change the front and now we change half a front because exactly in this position, we have knight d2 check. And what happens if the black king goes to the corner? Yeah, black gets a queen, but we made him on c2. Mm -hmm. That's right. So you got it. It could also have been e1, c2. We, we're just aiming for the c2 square. So, so that means with this knight check on d2, we are chasing the black king out of the corner. Has to go to c1, king c3. And now the king has to go further. And when you, now we're working with the king and knight. So now you get a little glimpse of what's going on when the king and knight is working. So it's very normal that let's say this was the last black move. And then we move the knight to control this square, the king just left. That's a very, that's 
it's a very normal method how to do it. So knight b3. And it, this is a little bit of a scary part because it looks like this all this open space the king can run into. And the king can also go for the knight. But white has everything under control just. So let's see. So king to d4. So this is a very typical way when we chase the king. The knight is controlling this square. So if king goes here, again, we're forcing it the other way. And then we have typical maneuvers like this, taking that square, and then knight c3 taking the d1, forcing the black king further that way. So these were just a, a few examples of typical king and knight versus king. So let's see, king f2, and the king just came from e2, so knight c1. King g3, king e3. And if you notice, then we are just in time to control g3. So black cannot stalemate himself. And now we have a forced mate like this. Or we could also go like this. We looked at these options uh, in the previous class. So black can still not take the knight. So let's say black runs up the board. So if black, we can still mate the king here, but again, a8 a was the only corner we, we couldn't mate when this pawn has crossed the Trotsky line. So um, king h4, king f4. And let's say black is making a run for it. And now we are just in time. So we protect the f7 square, and now we control d8. So the king was not allowed to run to that corner, and now we keep it in there. Now we're actually trapping the black king in the corner. So uh, let me just go back. I believe this was the main line. Yeah, if king f4, um, the knight comes in, and white can also make um, go for Bolton's position here. If you remember where the knights were here, and the black king was forced down in the corner. So, so going up the board is the main line, and we got to this position where we control the black king. And again, these movements where the control of this square makes it possible for the king and knight to control the black king. Let's say king a6. So here's a funny thing. Let's say in this position, we notice that the knights are creating this wall. So in this position, white would like a certain position with black to move. So he actually makes a king triangulation to lose a tempo. So that's what happened next. Yeah, if king goes back here, we get to Bolton's position and the king is trapped in the corner because of this wall. So we're going to make the king down here now. So king goes up and now we have the position we want with black to move. And here black has a choice again after knight f2. If king h4, Poland's position, um, we're forcing the king downward. f2 is clever. So let's say the king runs up the board. Check. Again, if here we force it downwards towards the h1 corner. So, so let's say black is seeking refuge in the h8 corner. But now we already have the black king trapped in the corner. And now we just transfer this knight to f5 instead. So now we just need to find the right moment to release the reserve knight. And... Hmm. 
That's a good point. Some of these movements resembles uh, when Lewis and Bishop and Knight made. Mm -hmm. So um, this is really useful how you uh, coordinate, uh, let's say, pieces of lesser value like king and knight. They are among the, the weakest pieces on the chessboard. So uh, if you didn't get the puzzles, I'm pretty sure I sent them. Then I will send them right after, so you get them in half an hour. So don't worry. Um, so how do we do this? Now, let's see. So we cannot release the knight right away. So we need to change front first and get this king to a certain square. Because now we can do it, because when we release the knight, the reserve knight is going to keep the king trapped and the other knight is going to give a check here. Or maybe f8 and then g6. So, so there are a couple of options, let's see. And then we just need to get the knight to g6. Mm, one tempo short. Yeah, and this should be move 54. So to make a very long story short, this is a very fascinating end game. The whole idea was to get the pawn from h4 to h3, so we could sacrifice our knight on h2. And so that took a while. And after that, we had, after the pawn was on h3, we had to prevent the king from running to that corner. And we had to change front many times in different corners. So uh, this is truly a fascinating puzzle or a fascinating study, I should say. So all this material is in the base. Yeah, so two questions. Um, so when to decide to change front, it's all about you, you want to release the re reserve knight as quickly as possible. So, uh, so uh, that, that's, that should decide when to change front. It's, it's about re releasing the reserve knight. Uh, which corner is square? That is, the, that is the, um, the Trotsky line. Let me show you before we uh, end. So the Trotsky line is the one you need to know. And the idea is if the pawns are on the Trotsky line or has not crossed it, let's say we have a pawn, black has a pawn on h6 or h5. This pawn has not crossed, crossed the Trotsky line. Let's say the Trotsky line is like this. If the pawn has not crossed the Trotsky line, then we are able to mate in all four corners, no problem. As soon as the pawn has crossed the line, there are certain corners we cannot mate in. So let's say, um, so let's say as we just saw, if this pawn has gone to h3, it has crossed the line. So we are not able to mate in this corner. So uh, similarly, um, yeah, if this pawn has gone too far, then I don't actually remember. Let's say this pawn gets, and the king is up here. I don't remember which of the corners it is. It's probably, uh, the one first away, but um, so so um, so that's the idea. So the Trotsky line means that you know behind the Trotsky line or on the line, you can mate in all four corners. You don't have to worry at all. But once the pawn crosses, you have to be careful where the the black king runs. Okay. Yeah, I will send an email afterwards to uh, with the puzzles. Uh, so let me know if there are others who didn't receive the puzzles for some reason. I will send an email. And if not, so you didn't get it either. I, I, okay. You know what? I'll just send an email out to everyone with the puzzles. And then... Um, I will see you back again at uh, around 8.30, okay? So...